Gleek is the, the man. Uh, and, above, and, and beyond that, uh, Gleek is a great writer. The book is one of the most beautifully written pieces of literature, uh, other than being a scientific book. Uh, the, the funny thing is, is that in recent years, the, the uh, non-fiction science writers have actually outdone the science fiction writers in um, original conceptions, which have the added benefit of being real and possible. So the book has had an impact on you. Uh, chaos theory is one of those things that uh, almost any writer of science fiction must take into account, no matter what kind of story they write. Uh, because it, it, will, it, it, it has as much importance for, for understanding the physical world as uh, relativity does or, uh, or you know, it, as Newton had, uh, did at one time. Um, it's, it's an immensely powerful tool. It's, I see it as a kind of uh, extension of uh, calculus uh, dealing with irregularities and uh, whatever. It's, it's just a fabulous development. Um, and I've yet to fully understand it. <laughs> we should start a club. Thanks, George. Let's talk to Garfield Reeve Stevens. He's always inspired by ideas on the cutting edge of science. Gar, it's Commander Rick. What do you think about James Glick's book, Chaos? Um, James Glick's Chaos, what was fascinating about that is it's the first book I was able to read and finally have a, an actual understanding of uh, chaos. I had read articles about it before, but they were all designed for people who had some sort of background in it. And I was feeling a bit lost. The chaos book, I was really surprised just how uh, good an explanation it was of what was going on. I've got to get my copy of that book out of the trunk. Gar, you've read the book. Are you going to use chaos theory in a story? Right now, I'm always juggling story ideas and book ideas, and uh, sort of the three I'm juggling right now, they all fit into chaos and fractal understanding of the universe. I think the, the most fascinating thing about fractals is a fractal is a uh, graphic representation, let's say when it is graphed, of an algorithm. And uh, an algorithm, mathematical statement, which will describe uh, complex patterns, uh, chaotic patterns, and the implication there is, since there's this infinite depth to a fractal pattern, and fractals can exist in three dimensions and four dimensions, is that it seems to me there is the possibility there is an algorithm which will describe the four-dimensional structure of the universe, because the universe is a fractal pattern. And uh, that's certainly uh, a profound thought that's come to us from fractal math and uh, chaotic theory and something that I'm sure is going to be turning up not only in my books, but lots of other people's books, because this is an idea that has sort of electrified the uh, scientific community, or the science fiction writing community. Thanks, Gar. Okay, George doesn't understand it, and Gar sort of does. We should talk to a writer with a science background. Yeah, yeah, let's talk to Greg Benford. He's a prolific science fiction writer and professor of physics at the University of California. Dr. Benford, I presume you've read about chaos theory. How might it be used by science fiction writers? Well, chaos theory essentially says that dynamical equations can be so delicately balanced that you can't, in fact, make long-term predictions because the, the equations are on a knife edge, and any slight deviation will give you a completely different result. Uh, in science fiction, that's a great metaphor. I haven't used it myself because I haven't figured out yet how to use it. Um, it has the look of being one of those great ideas that doesn't lead anywhere in terms of fiction, but I could be wrong. I haven't solved the problem, but probably somebody else has. Since, since I first encountered chaos theory, um, it, 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 I, mean, I, I actually sort of gave a quote to uh, the book by James Gleick, uh, sort of said, you know, it's like somebody suddenly turned on the light switch. And um, it is, I've found, since I read that book, that virtually every new thing I read or encounter suddenly begins to fit. I, I, I become even more fascinated sort of sitting in airplanes. You know, you're, you're, you're sort of passing over water or coastline or forest or or the results of human beings' activities. And you see these same shapes and patterns at all, at all scales. And um, the fact that you see them at, at the sort of scale looking down from 30,000 feet and you see the same patterns, but a different scale, looking down from 5,000 feet, as you do from looking down from 5 feet, or 6 foot 5, uh, um, in my case, uh, is, um, um, I mean, I actually get an almost sort of religious sense of awe about it, I have to say.
think that uh, that poets and artists always have some understanding of the same things that scientists are most interested in. And it's not an accident, usually, that scientists become interested in a certain range of phenomena at a particular time. Uh, in this case, I felt strongly that an appreciation of disorder, an appreciation of randomness, a sense that smooth shapes were not enough anymore, was something that, that wasn't unique to science, that it, it, was, it was something that paralleled developments in the culture at large. Interesting, a branch of science that is so strange, most science fiction writers don't know what to do with it. And yet the trendiness of chaos theory means there's a real danger that some people are going to latch onto the name chaos and try to use it to prove all kinds of nonsense. See, there are patterns to the universe, which is why horoscopes work and why crystals can produce energy. Right, and no two flights are alike. But what chaos seems to be saying is there are some very complex things which we can in fact understand and reduce to mathematical formulas. And simple equations can produce very complex results. Patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again. Is it just me or is there a pattern developing here? Next week on Second Nature, we'll meet a man who's been studying crocodiles for 38 years. He's Halifax zoologist Bill Stumpy Watson.